Hi. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. So I um, am not having my coffee out here because it's pretty warm already outside. And I finished my first cup of coffee, so I've got my little pink drink. I don't know. It's like that mixy stuff. Do y'all use that stuff? Like the little mixy, you know, mixy tubes, and then you put them in there. I get them in like all the different flavors, and that's what I drink because it makes me drink more water. So it's Tip Tuesday. And this is interesting because um, I, I don't always have tips and tricks and things, but I really wanted this to be uh, my YouTube version of like my Instagram crochet and chat so I can kind of update you guys on things. And, you know, I, I like to have a topic. So today I do have a topic today, which is trying to get the most out of your handmade business financially. So some of the ways that you can save money and make more money as a maker. And I just wanted to touch on, you know, some of those things that have helped me uh, and that really the things that I thought about before I moved to being full time, because um, I figure that's helpful. Um, so let me know. Um, I'm going to give it a minute. I'm going to talk about some other things first, but then I'm going to get my little crochet project. But um, if you have questions about that, let me know, you know, about questions about going full time, questions about making more money with your purchases, questions about pricing. Um, I would love to take today uh, and this, you know, time here on YouTube to cover some of that. But um, also let me know what you're up to this weekend. Uh, this weekend, it's Tuesday. It's been a crazy couple of days. Um, but let me know what you're up to this week and maybe what you're working on. Um, I am still chugging along on my crop top my little little crop top um it is hopefully going to be a design that's the goal i want it to be a, a pattern design but um it's been kicking my butt um i've been working on this design for quite some time um but trying to do size inclusive crop tops is definitely a challenge um but i've got my hook and i've got my yarn i'm using burnett maker home deck for this one um yeah, and starting to think about fall designs. So this will be, if I release it this year, it'll be like a transitional crop top that you can wear underneath stuff. Uh, yeah, this yarn color is really nice. Thank you, Rolling in Yarn. Um, and hey, everybody. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Gina. Uh, I think I just got this from Walmart, like Walmart online, because they don't ever have this in the store, but at least my store. Uh, but I found this on walmart.com. They do like free two day shipping like Amazon. So sometimes it's kind of nice for yarn because I feel like Amazon, usually the yarn's kind of overpriced. There is some yarn on Amazon I want to try. It's called uh, like the Fox yarn. It's t-shirt yarn. I still haven't got my hands on t-shirt yarn. I've made t-shirt yarn, um, but I haven't purchased any. Um, so that is on my to-do list. But let me know what you guys are, are working on this week. Um, as I work a little bit on my crop top. We had a long night last night. We've had some crazy stuff happen in here at the Pink Sheep household. Um, potentially some cool updates to share with you guys soon. Still kind of on the down low and a little secret, secret hush hush. Um, but some really potentially big things happening in the house. Uh, so I'm excited to be able to share more about that with you guys possibly soon. I did release, um, hello, Nancy. Thanks for joining in, everybody. Um, I did release a new design today that I'm super excited about. Um, all the links are in the description, um, but it's called Think Yarny Thoughts. Let me stand up a little bit so you guys can see. Oh, let's see. There we go. Think Yarny Thoughts. It reminds me of like a camp counselor t-shirt. Uh, and I just released that today. So it's my, uh, I'm trying to release a new design once a month, just a fun yarn, uh, related design. Uh, and I love the purple. I wanted something where I could get, I don't have a purple t-shirt, so I wanted a purple t-shirt. Uh, and it comes in a bunch. It comes in like blues and navies and black and, um, all of the other colors too. 
but um I this is my first time offering a notebook I've always wanted like a little yarn journal like a yarn notebook uh and so the front the design is a little different but it has the little suns and it has a little more color and so I have a notebook and a mug and a travel mug like one of those insulated travel mugs which I love um and then a tote bag so that's all in this. And those are in the description box if you guys want to check them out. I'm, I'm really excited about this design. And I have stickers. I need to release the stickers. I totally forgot about the stickers. Um, but yeah, super excited about this design. And I'm trying to plan ahead and plan out and have um, one new like apparel type design each month. Um, that's kind of the goal. We'll see if that happens. Um, it can get a little intimidating just like with patterns where you feel like you you don't want to give yourself too much, you know, work, uh, too many goals and then feel like you can't reach them. Um, but yeah, let's dive right in. I wanted to talk about um, tips and tricks for making more money with your handmade business. And this is not at all all inclusive. It's just the things that have helped me uh, and especially on my move from going from a full-time nine to five type job. I feel like I'm cutting my head off too. Trying to make sure that you guys can actually see. I am crocheting, <laughs> crocheting chat. Um, but some of the things that I had to think about, um, you know, it's, it's not for everybody. Um, you know, there are some people who don't, who don't want to do making full-time, you know, and um, the first time I freelanced, that was kind of how I felt when I started looking for a full-time job because I hadn't really found my groove. Um, and I guess I can start there. So the first time that I started freelancing, so I was only doing craft shows. I was selling finished products. I was making products and selling them. Um, and I was doing photography. So I do, um, I do small brand photography. So like I help other makers and artists take photos for like marketing and social media. So that's what I was doing. I was doing that and I was doing my shows and it was actually pretty great. Like the shows were lucrative surprisingly in Atlanta, people still want to buy cold weather gear, but my busy times were definitely the fall. So I would start shows in October and then I would do those shows all the way through right before Christmas and like I said, as long as I planned ahead and got my inventory up and had goals and like had all of that ready to go, figured my pricing out, um, it was actually pretty successful. You know, um, it could not have worked if my husband wasn't working. So if the captain wasn't working at that point, so he had a full time job, he was carrying insurance, all that fun stuff. Um, but it was enough for me to feel productive and feel like I was contributing Um you know, a lot of the reason that I left my full-time job, if you guys have been following me for a while, um, you know that we actually lost our only child. Um, that was in 2015. I went into preterm labor. It's probably a little TMI, but it's, it's a huge part of how Pink Sheep launched into what it is today. Um, after that happened, I just couldn't stay in the job that I was in. It was just mentally, it, it was not going to happen. It wasn't working. I wasn't um, a good employee either. You know, like my headspace wasn't there. And so that was when um, Matt said, you know, you should probably just do something else, you know. And at that time I had been crocheting. I started crocheting again. And I said, well, let me start looking into like some craft shows and things. And um really just went with it, you know, and started going to craft shows and selling things. And um, luckily Atlanta is very, very supportive of artists and makers. So there were actually a lot of local shops that carried handmade goods. So I started reaching out to the shops. Um, and so that probably would be my first piece of advice is if you're wanting to sell in person or sell locally is to really start putting yourself out there. So don't be afraid to just reach out, you know, go to these websites. If, if you have little handmade shops in your city, um, I know for me, for instance, a lot of smaller cities, they might have one, uh, you know, you might have one like handmade shop that's maybe more of like an art shop versus like a craft shop or a maker shop. Um, 
but you can just reach out. You know, some of them, you go to the website, they might have an application process that you can fill out, but that'll kind of get you prepared as to the kind of information that you're going to need. Um, but that's what I did. I started reaching out to shops and I started reaching out to the people who ran shows. And I was asking for advice of like how to get accepted to the shows. And one of the biggest things is photography. So one of the biggest things that you want to focus on if you want to start getting into like shops and shows and selling that way versus and online. I mean, online, it's a big deal, too. Um, but you're not going to get kicked off of Etsy because your photos aren't that great. You know, you might not have as many people purchase stuff, but, um, for you to get into shops and get into shows, um, you want to invest that time and effort into getting really great product photos of your work. Uh, let's see. So with the shows, um, really just being prepared. So starting small, start with your smaller shows. Um, price wise, I always heard that you want to plan to make three times the show fee. So if you start off with like $25 shows, you really have an easy, you know, you can say, okay, I need to make $75 at this show. And that should be easy for most of you guys. If you're putting inventory together, um, you're really looking at your price points. Um, I did use, I tended to use that formula three times your materials. That was usually my go-to formula. Um, until I started selling in shops, because a lot of these shops require you to either pay monthly, which I never did. I was not ever in a shop that made me pay monthly because I wasn't guaranteed to make any money, you know? So I've always been the type of person where I'm not going to pay up front if, if I don't know I'm going to make any money except for like shows, you know, shows you have to pay your show fee, but I would never be in a shop that, that required me to pay monthly. Um, but usually the other side of that, if they don't make you pay monthly, is they're going to take up to 50% of your sale. Um, so you have to really start thinking like, okay, are my items priced high enough for me to sell wholesale or on a consignment basis? So really start to think about that. And that caused me the, the first year that I started selling in a couple of shops. I was in at the highest point. I was in four shops in my area. Um, and that year I upped all of my prices across the board. Um, when I first started selling scarves, I was selling them for like $25 because I was using acrylic yarn. It was still chunky yarn, but it was acrylic yarn. And I was selling it to friends and coworkers and things like that. And so 25 bucks, it's fine. You know, that's, that's cool. Um, and I think by the time I finished my shows. So my last year doing shows, I was selling my scarves for 75, $65 a piece. Uh, because that really gave me the wiggle room of like, okay, I'm, I'm getting my materials. I can pay like the commission, whatever that cut is and for show fees. And I'm still going to make money. That was the issue. You know, like you, you have to make money. I mean, it's great if you want to have a hobby, but if you just have a hobby, then you're putting a lot of effort in to go to a show to sell stuff if you don't really care whether or not you make money. I think most of us care if we make money. Um, so you really want to look at those prices and make sure, you know, and I know it depends on the area um, to an extent, but it also depends on the quality of your work. And if you really can sell it, you know, if you love what you do and you put all of this time and effort in it and you're willing to really put that out there at the shows. Cause that's the other thing. If you're going to shows and I'm going to do a whole, I need to do a whole video on craft shows, like just being successful at craft shows. But, um, it's really important that you engage. Like you have to, you know, if you have been, if you want to be in a store, you need to go talk to the store owners. Like you need to get yourself, like create that relationship and that connection. So they know who you are. They start to kind of have that care about you being another local artist um, and then at the craft shows, it's the same thing. Like you need to connect with people. You need people to see that passion that you have for what you're doing. Um, I have literally had people at craft shows who come up to my booth and they say, oh, I love your stuff. I just don't have the money to buy anything right now. And I'll just chat them up for like 10, 20 minutes, just talking about my work and like random stuff and life and who I am. And they'll end up buying something before they go which is crazy. They were like, I don't have any money to buy something, but they'll find something small. Like usually I always had my cat cozies. Like I sell that cat cozy pattern bundle. That's got the coffee and the beer cat sleeves for your, for your cups and uh, coffee cups and bottles. And 
those started at $15, which is still kind of high. But again, I started selling those at like 10 and I upped my price because I would sell out at shows. So if you're selling out of stuff, you've got to up your prices because you're not going to be able to keep up with demand and you're not a sweatshop. You know, you can't, you can't work yourself to the bone and just continue to sell out and you're not going to have any time to create new designs or market things or focus on your photography or if you want to write a blog you know i don't know but you won't have time to do any of that so um my little coffee cozies went from ten dollars to fifteen dollars and people would usually buy those they're like these are cute i may not even keep it for myself but it's a great little christmas present um, and they feel good because we had that connection and they feel like they got to support me and they didn't have to spend $65 on a scarf, you know. Um, so making more money with your handmade business, is putting yourself out there, looking for new opportunities, looking for craft shows in your area. Um, another way to find um, without just Googling, like you can Google handmade shop in your city, you know, um, or you can, I think there's like a bunch of festival um, craft show festival websites out there. I used to look at those when I was first kind of figuring out what shows I wanted to go to and what was out there. Um, I would use those like general festival websites and I, I would look them up and then I would try to find that festival to see if it was still happening, if that was current, um, if there was someone I can reach out to about being a part of it, um, if they had an application process, what the costs are. So you can do those um, you can also look to see if your city has a Facebook group for artists or makers or both. Um, Atlanta has this really cool Facebook group that it's all local artists and makers and they share feedback on craft shows. They'll sell um, materials of like, you know, I'm getting rid of my old tent for shows and I'm buying a new one. Does anyone want to buy my old one? Um, they share craft shows that they know of. Um, they'll share scam stuff, you know, if someone's trying to do pop-up shops, but they're not marketing them and they're taking your money and it's not actually happening. Like all of those things are in this group. So you may have something like that in your area. And that's a great way to connect with other makers and figure out other opportunities that you can be a part of. Um, and I need to count this or I'm not going to be able to keep going. Let's see. I'm supposed to do, I'm starting on the little other cup. So I got this cup. Uh, and I'm supposed to do, just have 24 of these left. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, Oh yeah, that was too much, 23. And then I gotta do single crochet two together. There we go. Now I should be able to be on autopilot. Just that first one. Um, okay, so. That was my first tip is getting yourself out there and finding new opportunities. Um, and Nancy, so far I've been making for my family and I have two friends who offered me money to make them blankets. I'm thinking of selling more. Yes. And get photos of your stuff. So like, don't forget to photograph your stuff. You should start creating this repertoire of all the things that you've made, especially if you liked making it. If you hated making it, don't share it. If you share it, people are going to ask you to make more of it. If you don't want to make it, focus on sharing the things that you want to make. Um, that's super, super important. Um, share more of what you want to bring in the work for. Um, but take photos of your stuff. Like take that time. You finish the item. You get it ready to go. Find a way to like set it up somewhere. Focus on your photography. Get some good lighting. Um, window lighting is great. Window lighting is perfect. I have one soft box that I purchased to help me do photo shoots. I never use it. I just find the window light in my house and I move my table over there or I move whatever it is over there that I want to use. And cell phones are great. Cell phones are awesome. You know, I, I do for most of my photos, I do have a professional camera, but you don't have to make that upgrade immediately. Um, that takes me to my next tip is you don't have to buy a whole bunch of crap. <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, I think when we start a business, we get so entrenched in this idea of like, well, I need business cards and I need packaging materials and I need tissue paper. And I need, um, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need all of these things. And you do not need all of these things. I repeat that. You don't, you don't need all of these things. Um, and it's important that you don't, put your don't put yourself in debt um just to start your small business 
Um, now it's different if you're like opening a store, you know, you might, you might need to take out a small business loan to open a store or have a brick and mortar or something like that. But um, there are so many ways to start your business out and not go into debt, not put crap on credit cards, you know? Um, and I think that for me, um, and some of it is really, it's really great if you can find ways to reuse, because then that can be part of your pitch of like, you know, you, I, I used to want to to write in my stuff, please excuse my ugly packaging. It's recycled, you know, um, because Amazon fully funded my shipping needs for a really long time because we order a lot of stuff from Amazon prime and I would get all these boxes and they're great boxes. So I would break them down, stack them up in my craft room, stick them, you know, between a wall and something else. So they're all there and I can see the sizes and that's what I shipped all my stuff in for a long time. Um, you know, use what you have. Don't don't feel like I need to go get poly mailers with my label on them. Those are expensive as crap and they're going to get thrown in the garbage. So, like, think about that, too. That's also why I don't put business cards in my packaging anymore, because, I mean, some people might, you know, keep them, but most people are going to toss them. So, like, you're creating garbage, you know? <laughs> um, and so I do think that and like putting stickers all over your boxes, they're going to throw the box out, you know? So then you just wasted all your stickers. So I did start, um, and I need to order some more because I just kind of, I put them in there when I can, but when I sell a hook, so if someone purchases one of our 3D printed crochet hooks, um, I purchased these cute little pink sheep logo stickers that go in there but I don't stick it on anything. I leave it on the little, it's like a, like a roll of circle labels and I cut it. So like, if they want to stick it on something they can, and I feel like they're less likely to throw away a sticker than they are a business card, you know? So think, think ahead of like, what is going to be seen as added value to your, your customer. Um, we order a bunch of stuff from Chewy. So Chewy.com, cause we've got our two dogs and we've got our cat. And, um, Chewy, if you have a dog or if you have a cat and you're ordering like the big, um, things of litter, like cat litter or cat food, um, anything like that, they usually pack it with, um, craft paper, brown craft paper. I don't even want to tell you guys how many times I have gotten that craft paper out of there and taken God knows how long to straighten it out. Like I just smooth it out with my hands and I fold it up really neatly and nicely. And then I use crap. I use the same, I just cut it into the pieces that I need to package up my stuff. Um, and if you feel like, well, that's kind of ugly and I, and I want to use something colorful, well, use your scrap yarn to tie little bows around the, uh, craft paper so that it's pretty. Um, now I have, uh, I got to a point when I was selling large scarves um, on my Etsy shop and I was starting to try to think like, how can I add some value? Now this meant my price had to go up because I was adding things to it. But um, I also needed my shipping costs to be smaller. So sometimes it's more cost effective for you to purchase like some poly mailers because they're, they're lighter uh, and they're easier to package. So but you can get them cheaper on Amazon than like having to go get them branded. So um, I ended up buying these huge like 16 by 20 poly mailers so that like a whole scarf and a hat could fit in that poly bag. Uh, so that was a good investment for me because my costs went down, you know, versus having a box because the poly mailers are so much lighter. So you have to think like, you know, what, what's the cost trade off, but I also bought them in bulk. I bought so many that I still have some and I'm not selling scarves anymore. So, you know, I have still found uses for them when I'm shipping out certain things. So they're not going to go to waste. You know, I'm going to keep them in my closet till I use them all. Um, but those cut down on my cost a lot for shipping. Uh, what else? Let's see. Oh, um, so as your brand grows, like I said, you may find ways to add value to the packaging. But again, try to think like, will this get thrown away? So when I was selling scarves, I was like, I really wish that I wasn't just shoving a scarf in a poly bag. I wish that like the scarf had something around it, like some kind of bag or to then put in the poly bag. Cause it just, I felt like it felt, it didn't feel as, as high quality. Like I wanted the experience to be better. Um, so I started looking up like 
you know, other types of bags that wouldn't be that expensive. And the problem was, I still felt like it was going to get thrown away. Like I was going to buy this extra bag, this extra bag and the poly mailer were going to go in the garbage. And so I was wasting my money. That was until I found, um, they are shoe, um, they're shoe bags. So they're like these black shoe bags with, um, I'll have to put a link in the description when I get done with this, but they have a clear section on the bottom. So like you can see the shoe that's in there and they're large enough to comfortably, very comfortably fit a big chunky scarf. And so, but they're like this, um, I think it's called non-woven material. So it's actually a material, it's a drawstring bag. It's meant for you to be able to like take your shoes with you and have them separated out in like your travel stuff. And um, I was like, this is perfect because this will keep their scarf safe you know, if they're storing it. So like if they're storing it for the winter, this bag is perfect. They can see the color of the scarf. They can stick it up in their closet. Um, and at the time it was actually not expensive. I think they were like a dollar or two a piece because you can buy them in a pack of like 10 to 20. And so I didn't end up adding any of that price onto the scarves because my scarves were already priced really well for me, you know, putting them in stores and like having them at craft shows. Um, but they, I was also able to use them to store the scarf before they shipped. So it was like this great multi-purpose thing. So just do your research, put things in like your like list on Amazon and think about them though. Like really think about, do I really need this? Is it going to add value? Is it going to get thrown away when the person gets it? Um, and as you continue to grow, you're going to add things that are like on brand. So for me, I still, um, I don't reuse boxes anymore because I have had to find boxes that work specifically for the items that we sell. So like we have a certain box that we ship out hooks in, we have a certain box that we ship out other tools in. Um, and that also keeps my shipping costs down because if I were to use Amazon boxes, um, a lot of them are too large or just not the right shape for the items that I'm shipping out. And I would have to add additional padding so that things don't like shake around in there when, when they're being shipped. Um, now I still keep a lot of Amazon boxes because I never know when I might need to send something for like Christmas presents or things like that. So I will keep a lot of the really nice Amazon boxes just folded up and stored. Um, but I also did end up upgrading and biting the bullet to really fun tissue paper. So I really wanted, I feel like the experience of getting stuff in the mail has just gone into the toilet. So like you buy stuff off of Amazon and you get this poly bag with the crap thrown in there, you know, you don't get notes. You don't get, you know, it's not like opening a present. Like you just get this plastic bag of stuff, you know, and I wanted that to be different for me. So like I wanted pink sheet to be an experience. Like when you open and people say that they're like, when I open it, it's like a present to myself. And that's what I wanted. And so, yes, I, I do have to include that in my pricing because now I'm constantly buying tissue paper because I get the colorful tissue paper that has my brand colors. And, um, you know, that's, it's important enough to me to invest in, but it took me, I mean, pink sheep has been around since 2015. And this is the first year that I've bought tissue paper. I usually would just use tissue paper saved from Christmas. So I was that person who like at Christmas, I would tell people like, please open your stuff, like open your stuff nicer. Uh, you know, um, don't rip everything. Cause then I would go around behind them and I would pick up all the tissue paper and I would lay it out just like I do the chewy stuff. And I would fold it up and put it in a, a Ziploc bag and I would take it home with me um, so that I could use it to <laughs> pack up my Etsy orders. Um, so you got to get a little crafty, you know, um, especially when you're just starting out. Um, let's see, Nancy, so far I use twine with wooden hearts to wrap up and I use a stamp on it. And some have showed me that they've saved the heart and hung it up. That's awesome. Exactly. That's what you want. You want people to, um, feel like that's something they want to keep. Now I write handwritten notes with all of mine and I know people aren't like framing my notes. Um, but I don't mind them tossing that versus something like a business card that might be anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar a piece, depending on how many business cards you buy and the quality of the business card. Now, business cards are definitely something you want for craft shows. I, I still firmly believe that you should be able to let someone leave with something in their hand. Now, some of those will get tossed, but some of them will not. And some of them will keep it if they want to find you again. So I still like having business cards for craft shows. 
but I don't go to crashes anymore. So I haven't bought business cards in a really long time. Um, I did invest. This was new. I just started wanting to do kits. Um, so like learn to crochet kits and hat kits and scarf kits that come with the yarn and come with the hook and come with everything you need, as well as videos on my YouTube channel to help people create them. And I was a little concerned that the kits just look too plain. You know, I, you open this box and yes, I have the pretty tissue paper. That'll be a part of it. But you open the box and it's just yarn and a hook, you know, like there's nothing personal. Like I could write a note. But I felt like for the kit, I needed something more. And this is, again, this is a decision that I made over time, um, trying to think about my branding and trying to think about that experience that that person's going to have. So I did go on to um, Vistaprint and I got these four by six cards printed that have a thank you note from me on one side. So that'll save me a little bit of time. I don't know if I'm going to include a handwritten note with those or not at this point, because if you flip it over, it has area where I can write down what kit they bought. So I'll actually have a place to write in if it was the learn to crochet kit or the pom pom kit. Um, I would have a place to write the size hook that's included, um, the yarn that's included if they want to buy more of that type of yarn. Um, and then I have a little note section on there. So I, I have room on there to kind of personalize it and, you know, write a sweet message to people and, and like thanking them personally. Um, but the cards are super colorful. They're really on brand. They um, have my little logo on there too. And so I think for the kits, that was something that I decided to make that jump. But again, this is seven years in and I'm finally really, truly branding my stuff, but I feel like I can't. I feel like I'm in, I'm in the financial position now where the, the pricing that I have for all of my items allows me to do that, you know, and that things are selling. So my first goal or my first tip was to get yourself out there, you know, find craft shows if that's what you want to do. And I'm going to move because the uh, sun is like right in my face. So we're going to just twist this around like this. I'm going to scooch over because that sun is not being nice right now. There we go. That's a little better. I'm sure it's going to follow me and I'll just move again. But um, yeah, so my first first thing was get yourself out there, find yourself, you know, a local store, like talk to them, see if they'll carry some of your stuff. Because at that at that point, you only have to have a few items. You know, you don't you're not doing a craft show where you need a full table of stuff. Um, but also look for craft shows if that's something that you want to do. Get yourself out there, make some connections with other people and other makers and other people in the community. Um, I made the most random connection at my Aldi. So I was at Aldi. And I just, I, I was, this, it was when I was freelancing the first time and, um, I was just putting myself out there. Like I went through this weird phase where I was in my, you know, in my community and I would walk up to people and just be like, Hey, um, I'm a local maker. I crochet, um, you know, the holidays are coming up and I just want to give you my card. If there's anything that you think I could make for you or do for you. Awesome. If not totally cool, like no pressure. I just want to introduce myself. <laughs> and I was doing that to like random people, you know? And so I walked out of the Aldi and there was a security guard who always waved at me and was really nice. And he was talking to a woman who was an older lady that they obviously had met here at Aldi. And she was just updating him on her life and all this stuff. And this was I mean, this was probably four years ago, I guess. And I walked up and I introduced myself and I said my little spiel. That security guard ended up buying five full size blankets from me over the course of the next like year and a half. So you just never know. Like you got to put yourself out there and you got to tell people what you do and like, you know, bring it up in conversation that you that's part of, you know, one of your hobbies and, you know, you love making stuff and that you sell it now, you know, if anyone's ever interested. So that's getting yourself out there. And the other one is not buying stuff immediately. If you don't need it, like you don't, you can use what you have. You don't have to go out and buy hundreds of dollars worth of stuff um, and put it on credit cards and hope to God that your pricing is high enough and that things sell and that it's worth it. You don't have to do that. You don't make it personal in ways that's cheap. You know, I used to, I used to buy cardstock to write my thank you letters. Um, that ended very quickly as my sales started to go up, especially of things like stickers, because stickers are so tiny that the idea of like purchasing cardstock and having to cut all of that up 
was like, I feel like I'm wasting money, you know, and people aren't going to keep these again. They're not going to keep my thank you letters and like frame them, you know, that'd be really weird. <laughs> but um, I also hated that. So I print my shipping labels and just on regular printer paper, which means that an entire half of that sheet of paper is wasted. And I was throwing it in the garbage. And so I decided to cut that second half of the printer paper in half again. And it makes these little, you know, little cards. And that's what I write my notes on. So now I'm saving money because I'm utilizing this printer paper that would go in the garbage otherwise, because it's cut in half for the shipping label. Um, so find those little ways to like get creative. And, you know, I had a ton of markers that were just stored away in an old scrapbook bin. Cause yes, I used to scrapbook. Um, and the, the scrap, like I said, I wasn't using them. And now I'm finally running some of those markers dry because I use markers to write out my notes. I never had to buy any markers, never had to buy any Sharpies. I just used the things that were kind of like stowed away in the house somewhere that I wasn't using. Um, so yeah, it, it's something to think about and really consider, like, do I really need to buy this? And, um, I'm about to make an upgrade, I think we'll see. Um, but you know, I've been printing my own shipping labels just on printer paper and the captain was asking me like, don't you think it'd be easier if you just buy a printer that will print the, the label on a sticker? Because I print the label, I cut it out, I put it on the, the thing. I wrap it with packing tape. You know, it's this whole process to get the sticker on there. And he's like, if you could just print the sticker, just pop it on there and stick it in the mail. And I just, I didn't want to invest in it yet. You know? So like I, I put things off and put things off and put things off until I'm like, this would save me so much time. So you have to start making that those weighted decisions of like, is this going to save me enough time and enough money to make it worth that investment? Um, because I also found out that they, these little, they're little label printers, um, don't use toner and ink, oh, mind blown. So I was like, I feel like that's worth the investment in itself if it doesn't use toner and ink. Um, so I would be able to purchase this little printer for like a hundred and something dollars. And, you know, obviously I have to buy the stickers, but I don't have to buy ink anymore. That's insane. You know? So think about these things, do your research, you know, see what you really need. Look for sales. Like that's the other thing. Sticker Mule, anytime Sticker Mule has a sale, I buy more of my stickers that I'm getting low on, you know, so take advantage of that. Take advantage of sales at Michael's. I used to buy my yarn wholesale, not wholesale, but um, I would try to like line up the sales with coupons. So if Michael's had the yarn on sale and then they had like a 20% off, you know, everything in your purchase, including sale items, um, I would... I would try to buy as much yarn as I had the financial ability to do if I knew that it was going to sell at like an upcoming craft show. So just planning, you know, having some good planning and, and again, starting with what you have and not feeling like you have to buy everything immediately. And on that same tick, um, one of the things that, and Alicia, I saw that you said you're that person. Yes. The, the, Tissue paper hoarder. I think that's what we should be called, the tissue paper hoarders at Christmas. Um, so on that same tick, if you are interested in, you know, trying to be a full-time crafter, I seriously suggest trying to cut down on your own personal debt first. The financial freedom that you get from paying off things like student loans and car payments and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to help you feel like you have more wiggle room to make those tough decisions of like leaving a full-time job and still being able to afford to like buy health insurance through the ACA. So that was my biggest fear. The first time I was freelancing, Matt was still working. So he had our insurance covered. Like we didn't have to worry about any of that. And I was always so concerned that, you know, if I, if he was freelancing and I was freelancing, what are we going to do about insurance? You know, I've always had insurance through a job. Um, and in case anyone here is thinking about it and is, is worried about it too, it was the easiest process I could have asked for to get health insurance through the ACA. So like we are fully covered now. I made sure that my doctors were included. Um, it is possible for you to get um, tax credit to help monthly for your payments, depending on how much you think you're going to make that year. So you do have to estimate, you have to estimate out and say, I looked at like the past three or four months and like 
estimated out how much I made per month and then said, okay, that's probably how much I'm going to make and add a little bit just in case. Um, and you can potentially get help, you know, per month so that your payment will be lower. Um, but that was a huge part of what was like keeping me from making that decision to leave my full-time job and become like a freelancer for myself. Um, and it was easy. Like I shouldn't have been worried about it at all. And I'm sorry, my nose is like super itchy and I don't know why. I think it's just the air out here. Um, but yeah, so, you know, trying to get things like debt under control and not buying things before you need them. That's really, and just being scrappy, you know, being scrappy and like, how can I utilize things that uh, I might not think that I would be able to use is very helpful. Hey, Ellen, thanks for joining. Um, so let me think, because I know that was not everything. And let me know if you'll have any questions too. Uh, and if you have any advice that you have, if there's things that you've done to help you, you know, grow your business. Um, and I'm going to move one more time because I told you guys this was going to happen. You know, the sun is just following me. <laughs> and by the way, I love getting to come on here to YouTube. I hope you guys are enjoying this because, um, it's been a fun transition, um, having something here on YouTube and not just on Instagram. Uh, I, I think it's a nice, you know, a nice mix to have both. So, uh, all right. Had, I had the other thing in my head and now I'm forgetting. Um, oh, additional streams of income. This is the big one. This is the, this is the macho, macho man. Um, this made all the difference for me feeling like that and insurance. So this and my insurance and, you know, trying to get to a point where I didn't have as much debt in my life. Um, to have a little more freedom. So I didn't have this big car payment over my head. You know, you save a lot of money when you don't have all these payments. Um, and so again, sorry, y'all. I don't know. My nose is so itchy. Let's see. I wipe it off of my shirt. It happens when I'm outside. So, oh, additional streams of income. Okay. So the first additional stream of income that I created was because of my stickers. So, the coolest thing about stickers is there are actually a lot of ways that you can make your own custom stickers that people might actually want to buy. So I use Procreate. Um, when Matt opened his drone business, so that's the captain, when he opened his drone business, um, he needed to get an iPad. And we are not Apple people. I do have an iMac, and that was for my photography um, to have the capability to use Lightroom and have, you know, the, the great monitor and processors and all of that for editing photos. So we had that, but we have Samsung. We are Samsung people. Um, and but he said, I need to get an iPad. This is going to make everything easier for my drones. And he was like, is there anything on the iPad that, you, that you'd want to use it for? And I was like, well, I've heard of this app called Procreate. And, you know, maybe I can try that because I, I heard it's really cool. And, you know, maybe I can design some stuff, like some logos, you know. And so I got into Procreate and that was how I created my first couple of stickers, which were the tarot card stickers. I'm pretty sure those were my very first stickers. And those just were great. Like people loved them. And I had no idea that the, the reception to those was going to be so good. But I quickly realized, OK, well, if people love them this much, then, you know, I can purchase them in bulk. I can buy higher amounts of stickers and then the stickers cost me less. So. Um, I'm not having to worry about the stickers not making enough money for me to be able to purchase them. I also ship them out using stamped envelopes, which is great because then instead of paying four dollars and something for a shipping label, it's 55 cents for a stamp. And I get to buy really cool stamps. That's been a, a vice that I have now created for myself because I love cool stamps. So, um, uh, yes, so stickers are great, but you also have the option if you are not someone who wants to use or can use Procreate, um, Canva is pretty freaking awesome for sticker making. So if you have Canva, now you will need the Pro Edition. So Canva is like $12.99 a month, I think, for the Pro Edition. And what that does for you is you get access to tons of of cool elements and graphics and icons and shapes and um, uh, all of those like cool things that you could then put together. And from what I've read on Canva, um, you can't just take, like if you go to their clip art, 
and you find a picture of yarn. You can't just stick the yarn onto the canvas, download it and sell it as a sticker. You have to make it your own design. So if you put the yarn on there and then you've got your text and you can curve your text around the yarn, but if you create your text or you add another element, like choose a crochet hook from their um, graphics list and add a crochet hook and like make it into your design using these elements. And if you have the pro edition, not only do you have access to all of that stuff at no extra cost, it's just included in the monthly subscription and you can cancel anytime. This is not like a, like a contract kind of thing. Um, so you could actually pay $14.99, make a bunch of stickers in one month, download them and then cancel your subscription if you wanted to. Um, but the other thing about pro is that you can remove the background from things. So if you want to make a sticker like of you or of something like your dog, you know, you could upload a picture of that, remove the background and then download that image. And you can download everything with a transparent background. So that's the other big thing. If you're creating something, you can get that transparent background. Um, and then you can send that file to Sticker Mule and they can get your stickers printed. So like there are a lot of options, even if you're like, well, I'm not the type of person who's going to draw something or design something, you know, in an app like Procreate, check out Canva. Um, because stickers have been a real game changer for me. It's, it's been fantastic. You know, people really like them. They feel like it's a small way that they can support me if they're not going to like buy a hook or something. Um, and it's been a pretty steady income. You know, I can, uh, I can come up with new designs every like month or two and just pop them in my Etsy shop and have them there. Um, the other thing was the merchandise. So this, the, this is my newest design. Think Yarny Thoughts. It's in my bonfire shop. I did put the link in the description to these because there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can get with this design on it now. Um, but I played around a little bit with a company called Printful, which is a print on demand. And I still use them for the mugs in my Etsy shop. So they link with Etsy. Uh, and when someone purchases it on Etsy, the sale goes through to Printful. And then um, Printful will fulfill that mug and they'll ship it out. I have heard a ton of good things about Canva. I'll have to check out Procreate. Yes, you need to. Check them both out. See what you like. Procreate's like $10. It's a $10 app. You do have to have an iPad. So I think that is what holds a lot of people back. I had never had an iPad. So, um, you know, because we got that one for the drone, I was able to start playing around with it. And I bought an Apple Pencil to, to draw. Um, and that was an investment I also made later. So you can use any... Um, like rubbery stylus. If you, if you, if you ever got one of those pins, it was like a click pen for writing that had a stylus on the end, like a rubber stylus. That's what I was using at first because that worked. It was technically compatible. It was just the, the right, you know, I don't know. It worked. Um, and then I invested in the Apple pencil after I decided, okay, I actually really like this, you know? Um, let's see. Oh, so I played around with Printful. I didn't have a very good, um, I didn't have a very good experience with them for like tote bags and things. They were really slow to get orders out. And so um, I actually stopped using Printful for a long time. Um, and I, that's when I found Bonfire. So Bonfire is who I use. They actually were created as a um, fundraising platform so that like churches and organizations and things like that could um, create their own shirts and do these like campaign fundraisers without having to purchase pre-purchase um, product, you know? So, and that's, that's the biggest issue we have as makers. It's like, I don't want to buy all this stuff and then nothing sells. Um, so Bonfire is fantastic because you can have as many campaigns as you want. There is no cost. Um, you can actually design shirts uh, on their platform. So if you create a campaign, you can design a shirt uh, in their platform. They have text, they have, you know, little icons and clip art and things that you can use. And then you launch your campaign and then you share it and people can go in and buy it. And usually what happens is you set how long you want the campaign to be open. So usually I set mine to like five to seven days. So for five to seven days, a campaign is open and all orders placed during that time at the end of that seven days, they all get fulfilled and shipped out. So it's really easy. I don't have to do anything. And uh, Bonfire handles all the sales tax and they just send you a check 
at, at the end, like what your cut is after everything has sold. So it's really great. You actually end up, you'll send them, um, you'll have to submit tax forms if you make a certain amount, which is great because then it's all like wrapped up with a bow and you can give it to your tax professional. Um, but it's really, it's been a game changer for me to have Bonfire that handle customer service, which is a big thing that Printful did not do. So if something happened, I had to reach out to Printful to try to like figure out how to get something else sent out. Um, so Bonfire really helped with that a lot. Um, so check them out for sure if you're interested. And I'll, I'll have to add a link in the description because I think I have like an affiliate kind of link that I can put in there. Um, but yeah, so stickers and um, merchandise has been big when it comes to having these multiple streams of income if you're wanting to be like a crafter or make it full time. Um, some of the other things, patterns, obviously I switched from selling um, finished products to selling patterns. And that has been um, really the, the biggest game changer for me because that's where I focus all of my efforts now. So if I'm crocheting, I'm usually designing a pattern um, and then I can get that tested and get that out. And then those patterns are out there forever, you know? So it might be five years from now, people are still going to be buying the same pattern, which is awesome, you know? And I don't have to do anything with that. I don't have to ship a sticker out. You know, um, it's a lot like the bonfire merchandise. You know, it, it takes care of itself because it's, you know, the patterns are PDF downloads. So I don't have to do anything. Um, so finding ways to make your life easier, um, to save yourself time and like way that, you know, should I purchase this now? Is it going to save me enough time to make it worthwhile? Um, but I think those are probably my top three tips is, is getting yourself out there, making new connections within your community letting people know what you do. Um, you know, there's tons of other things like optimizing your Etsy shop and, you know, social media and all of that. But those are such, you know, big topics within themselves. Um, but then the other one is just focusing on the finance side and focusing on using what you have and being scrappy and um, adaptable and um, not feeling like you need, need, need all of these things and you need, need, need to spend all of this money. Um, oh, I forgot to mention another thing with that is um, crowdsourcing and pre-orders. So and I, when I say crowdsourcing, it's like the GoFundMe stuff, but I really mean it more like pre-orders. So if you really, really want to do something um, like you want to order some new stickers or you want to order enamel pins, you know, things that are a big upfront cost, you know, enamel pins are anywhere from $250 to $3 plus per pin and you have to order in most cases a hundred pins. So that's $300. And if you don't know if those pins are going to sell, that's a really tough thing to put that investment in. So do a pre-order. So put it out there on social media, um, get yourself an Etsy listing created. That's a pre-order listing and have people come in and that will fund your purchase or at least partially fund it. So maybe you get $150 worth of orders towards your $300 purchase of pins. Um, so there's little ways to save money where people don't feel like they're just giving you money to do what you want. You know, they're getting something out of it. They just have to wait a little while. Um, so that's another really, really great way to watch those expenses and help you not feel like you're putting yourself in the hole in a way that you're not going to be able to come back from easily. Um, but yeah, let me know if you feel like any of that was helpful. I hope it was. Um, making sure I didn't miss any comments. Uh, and I hope you guys, thanks for joining me. I hope you guys enjoy these. This is only my second time going live for my tip Tuesday here on YouTube. Um, and it's great. I, like I said, I, I want to have the option to be both, you know, I go live on Fridays on Instagram um, and I want to continue to go live here. Let me know too, if you guys would be interested at all in doing like a crochet along kind of thing. Um, I've thought about doing a crochet along with my Luna cardigan. Um, cause it really is just an all time favorite and, and it's been kind of a classic. Uh, so I may make a new Luna cardigan, um, and do it as like a crochet along. So it could be part of my tip Tuesday that that's what I'll be working on. And you guys can work on one too. Um, and let me know what you think. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. Oh, oh, I can give you guys a sneak peek. Um, so we are going to be releasing our newest hook color. Uh, I would love a crochet along. Yay. I'll have to look into that. I think that'd be fun. And I think doing a Luna would be great because it's beginner friendly. Um, I can go over some of the trickier parts on the videos when we do the crochet alongs. 
Um, but you guys get the first sneak peek. Um, I, I don't think we've shared these at all. Um, you might have seen the color, but I haven't shared the finished ones. Uh, this is These hooks will be released this weekend, maybe Thursday or Friday. Um, but these are our fire hooks. So let me see if I can bring this over here so that it's not so bright. But these are an ombre red to orange, and they have a copper. It's like a copper glitter. So you can see that sparkle. It's almost like a flake, you know. So we wanted to make something that wasn't so like bright, crazy glitter like we've done for a lot of them. We wanted something that was a little more, um, you know, for people who maybe want something that's not pink and purple and teal and glitter. Uh, but this really, I feel like this glitter, it adds to it. I feel like it doesn't take away from it. Um, it just adds some dimension to that ombre effect. Uh, so these will be released this week. I'm super excited about them. We're going to have them all the, all the sizes. We've got everything from 10 millimeter up to 25. Um, but really excited about those. Those are going to be fun. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video, uh, the live. Thanks for joining in. Um, it sounds like everybody likes the idea of a crochet along, so I'll have to get on that. Um, and I am hoping to start working. My, um, my cowl testers are almost done, so my super chunky cowl, that will be ready to re be released um, next week, probably. And next week is the bucket hat release too. So if you guys have been waiting on the summer sneaky buns bucket hat, that's releasing next week. Um, and I'm going to start thinking about fall designs because I got to get on that. I got to get on the fall designs because I need a fall collection of cardigans. And I think I'm going to do a long cardigan with pockets. That's been on the list for a while because most of my cardigans are cropped. Um, I'm thinking about doing like a bathrobe like a like a robe out of blanket yarn I thought that would be awesome like with the tie and everything um it needs to be like the dad bod robe I think that would be funny um so we'll see how that goes and then I do have another tote bag that I want to do for fall that's um some really fall pretty fall colors that's going to be like uh, a basket slash bag so you could use it as both so you can use it as a tote bag or you can use it as a basket because it'll have like a flat bottom um and then uh, I think most of you guys know I'm, I'm going to try to release a craft show pattern bundle. So for anyone who does craft shows, um, it's mm -hmm. all of my top items that sold every year that are really fast and easy to make. So you can stock up really quickly. So that will be coming very, very soon. Um, the only thing left for that is I have to get the headband tested. So be on the lookout for that if you want to test the headband. It's super, super simple. It's a half double crochet headband. Um, but all of that will be combined into a pattern bundle that will have the super chunky scarf, my pom-pom hat, the headband, my cat cozies, um, my cat ear hat, and fingerless gloves. And maybe my mittens. I may just throw it all in there um, so that you guys can be ready if you're going to do craft, fall, fall craft shows or if you're going to be selling online. You, know, you can have plenty of inventory. Um, but yeah, it's getting hot out here. And I'm going to head inside and get some water. And um, I will see you guys for sure if you're on Instagram on Friday or I'll post it over here. I'll always I'll always reshare my Instagram uh, live videos here on YouTube if you want to watch. Um, but I'll have my crochet and chat live on Friday on Instagram. Uh, and until then, I will talk to you guys very soon. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye. <laughs>